Good morning. Hey now, PSW staff, clients, friends joining us. Welcome to Thursday's class. Uh, we're pretty much through the week and we've learned a lot. We've looked at a lot of people. Um, we've done a lot of good work. Tomorrow's film scoring results for uh, Back to the Future. That's going to be great. I'm very, very excited to share that with you tomorrow. Um, we looked at Marnie Nixon on Tuesday, the uh, great singer that dubbed all of those actresses. And then uh, we got sexy with the tango and Astor Piazzolla's music. So um, I kind of recap just because in case you, you missed out on classes, you know, they're always up and you can always go back and, and take a look at them. So um, that's one of the reasons why I do that. Uh, and it also kills some time, too. Now I'm just I'm teasing. Today we're going to be talking about a subject and a person I never thought I would ever really talk about, much less do a class about. But having read... Uh, in different books over the last few weeks and months, uh, um, it always kind of came back to me. I was like, boy, this guy really had an amazing life, a rags to riches life. I mean, literally was so poor and then ended up reinventing or rather inventing something in Hollywood and in the world that um, is still being used today. And uh, I just thought it would be really fun to share his story a little bit. Um, uh, today we're going to be talking about the makeup artist Max Factor. Max Factor, if uh, the first time I saw him was at the end of the I Love Lucy episodes his name would always come up and um you know as a kid i just for some reason it's a good it's a good name um i think it's a little bit better than maximilian factor watsovitz um you know, a little catchier but he was a visionary makeup artist wig maker and inventor really and he was known for creating the signature looks of of the air's most uh, famous icons the beauties uh, the males too but mostly the females the um Ava Gardner and Marlene Dietrich and Jean Harlow, um, their look is because of his, him, really. Uh, and he believed that glamour should be within reach of all women. So um, he was a, a ladies' man. I mean, in a, in a different way, in a way that he he thought glam. You know, if if glamour is available, glamour should be used, and makeup should be used. He coined the term makeup. It wasn't called makeup before. It was cosmetics. And um, makeup was kind of attributed to kind of just the kind of raunchy theater thing. But, but uh, he, uh, yes, I'm going to say it again, elevated <laughs> um, and, and made it something. He, he coined the phrase makeup. So, um, I mean, this guy was poor. He came, came from Poland, 1877, um, 10 kids, uh, was too poor to read and write, but... Um, he did uh, help uh, work at the at the Russian Opera and um, get a lot of experience when he was, I mean, even at the age of nine, he was apprenticed to a wig maker uh, in, in Poland. And he also worked on cosmetics uh, for Russian nobility. So he he kind of had a cool job, but he was a slave there, he said. Um, they, and he was kind of used as a slave to make royalty look great with wigs and makeup and all this stuff um but he wanted to get out of there i mean like many people america was a place for opportunity and so um uh, 1908 comes to the city you love lloyd loves john loves i love los angeles <laughs> And opens up uh, uh, his own little makeup place, barbershop makeup, and in South Central actually. There's just a there's just a neighborhood there now, but you know, hundred over a hundred years ago, I guess there was maybe a little uh, village or something, but um, South Central. Uh, and then um, he kind of opens it up, and again, perfect timing and luck meets Charlie Chaplin, Fatty Arbuckle, people in the movies movie business and this is very early you know this is we're not at the feature film length yet people are making reels and gags right now um and um you know and he starts kind of making a name for himself because he realizes 
this is this is what I mean by good timing. This is when people need a different kind of makeup. So we've looked at, um, you know, we looked at the taboo of being an actor on film. That was that was very lowbrow. You know, you did theater, but then when movies became a little bit more um, cooler, for lack of a better word, people were like, okay, maybe maybe this thing is a legitimate business we can be in. And they didn't have the makeup. They had makeup for the stage. But this kind of, ma this kind of makeup for the stage would cr This was fine because the audience was way away from the seats. But now that you have the camera and the close-up or whatever, um, the makeup would crack and it would, it would make their faces look clownish. And you could see all the uh, imperfections. And we just can't have any of this. Um, so he invents something called flexible grease paint. This is his genius to, to Hollywood, to, um, and also, I mean, I say the world because everyone, the whole world looks at Hollywood. I mean, they still look at Hollywood. I mean, TMZ, you wouldn't have that. We're always looking at Hollywood for better or worse. And that's where people sometimes get their influences. So he did change the world in that way. So with flexible grease paint, he was able to make the actors look more like human beings on the camera so again uh, they needed they needed him and it was great timing for him to uh, and it, it took a lot of work i mean hours and hours of i mean of in the back of his studio um and he had a few different businesses after south central he moved to downtown and hill street and i mean he worked so hard on his cracked craft to get what the actors needed on screen, not just with the, it started with the makeup, but then also with the hair and with wigs and with Cecil B. DeMille's Squawman, they needed Indians. And so he would actually use human hair wigs and that would, uh, you know, I mean, despite it being racist, uh, okay, uh, that solved a lot of problems for, oh, okay, this guy actually knows wigs too. Studios wanted to just buy him out and, and have him work full time. He was smart. He said, no, 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 I'm, you're going to rent them out from me and I'm going to sell to all the different stu studios, but I'm not going to, I'll only work for myself and um, made him one of the first multimillionaires uh, in Hollywood. So he becomes so rich, uh, he finally opens up in 1935. This is just a few years before he dies. The four-story Art Deco building that's still there, actually. It's a Hollywood museum, which I've never been to. And I, I was reading about it. Maybe we should we should go. Um, and uh, it's at 1660 North Highland. And, um, and that whole building is uh, used for his makeup and his products. And there were different rooms that you could go in. And they had the lighting already there for you to try out the products. I mean, um, there's so many other little things, makeup inventions that he came out with. He was the, he was the beginner. Of, he started this whole thing and made everybody glamorous. From Gene Harlow's platinum hair style to um, Clara Bow's bob to Lucille Ball's uh, false eyelashes and her red curls. Um, just uh, and, and made it a family business. His son his son came in and quickly changed his name to Max Factor Jr. And um, the business is still owned by the Max Factor family. Um, so it's, I just thought it was interesting to see this. So he dies in 1938, but he wins an Oscar in 1929 uh, for Best Makeup. Um, and uh, I just thought it's interesting to see the development of cinema. We've talked about the cameras and the directors and the people that were responsible in the early... Um, early 20th century of movie making well you know so much of this is how people look obviously so he was able to to invent something for people to really to look great and those starlets i mean no doubt they look so beautiful so there's a little little history on max factor and his makeup business um hope you enjoyed it tomorrow's back to the future so um it's going to be a lot of fun so i miss you and i love you and um Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.